said, Dad, how did she do that? He said, magnets. I went, oh, Dad. Oh, Dad, how much did you pay for it? Because he was 86. I thought he'd been scammed. He said, I don't know, 60 bucks. He said, my pain is gone. I'd really like you to look into this. And uh, I said I'd look into it. And I remembered that two of my patients, a year before, when they were getting their physical, had come in. And I said, you know, I like to, I'm interested in people. And I said, you know, what, what's, what's exciting in your life? And they said, what I heard them say was, they were selling magnetic beds, you know? And I had this vision of these beds that would vibrate or something. And I had my stethoscope in my ears, and I was listening to his wife's chest. They always came in together for some reason. And I was listening to his ch her chest, and I, I said, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> you know, my waiting room is full. I'm behind anyway. So I let it go, but I remembered who they were, and I phoned them up, and I went out to their place, and they showed me all the products. Now, the first thing they did was the strength test on, on me. And I couldn't... Have every one of you had a strength test? Have you all had a strength test? So you know that it's pretty amazing the difference it takes. How long does it take that difference to occur when you're standing on mag steps? It's immediate, right? So here I am assistant clinical professor at the university and they're knocking me off my feet one minute and the next minute they can't budge me how does that work I don't know so they said did I want to join and buy everything and I said <laughs> the thing that I loved about Nikan was the different concept they had about health that I'd never seen before they said look it looks like we're moving away from nature and the farther away we get the sicker we seem to get. How can we move back towards nature? And what is it about nature that makes us healthy anyway? And of course, Nikan discovered three technologies. They discovered the energy of the earth, magnetism, the energy of the sun, far infrared, and the energy of the air, negative ions. What if I told you that our magnetic and far infrared products could decrease discomfort? Are we allowed to say the P word? I think we are, aren't we? Uh, it could decrease pain, could decrease inflammation, could increase circulation, and we could prove that with those thermographic studies with no side effects and no contraindications to their use. Would those be good products? That's what I explain to people. And I say, does that make sense to you? And they go, yeah, it really does. And I say, would you like to see these products? You know, I don't show them. Uh, uh, I don't take them down to my bedroom anymore. Can I use these things? Yeah. So what I do is I say, here's our sleep system. I say, do you sleep on a normal bed? And they usually say, yeah. And I go, does it have metal springs in it? And they go, yep. I say, well, those metal springs collect electricity. And you can measure that with an induction meter. I've got to tell you this story. I'm over at... Uh, a friend of mine's house one day, and he's a Nikon distributor, and we're doing a presentation to one other guy, and a third guy comes up to the door, and he doesn't know we're doing a presentation. He's just coming in to have coffee with his friend, and his friend works from home now. And he, so he comes in, and he's, he's wearing this kind of meter on his belt. And so I'm a curious fellow, and I said, what's that meter? And he looks at me, and he goes, it's an electrical pollution meter. So I know he's dumbing it down for me, right? I said, oh, really? I said, show me how it works. So he takes it off his belt and he clicks it on and he holds it up to uh, a flare uh, an incandescent light and it goes, and a little reading on the scale. And I went, oh, that's interesting. He said, that's nothing. And then he held it up to a fluorescent light and it went, a little higher reading. He said, I said, oh, that's interesting. Fluorescent lighting is more polluting than incandescent lighting. He said, absolutely. He said, that's nothing. He said, come with me. He walks down to my friend's bedroom. He puts it down on his guest bed on the top of it, and it goes, and the little needle goes right off the end. I said, what's happening? He said, electrical, or, uh, metal springs in this bed are collecting the electro smog, the electrical pollution that's in this house, that's everywhere, and you're laying right on top of it. And that's not good for you. So what we do is we put this foam thing on top, rubber, latex rubber, and it has magnets in it. Magnets are very good for you. We've done a strength test on these people by that time. We put a pillow in there, and that's got magnets in there. And then we put you in there. And then what? 
And then we put the comforter so that you're cocooned in that magnetic energy uh, of the earth, replacing and restoring the energy that you're supposed to have replaced and restored by living on the magnetic earth. But we don't live on the magnetic earth anymore, do we? 95% of the time we're indoors. This has got a cement basement with rebar in it, I bet, cement floor. Um, in m many people's houses, there's a, at least in Canada, there's a basement. So you're removed 12 feet from the earth already. And then some people go upstairs to go to bed. Um, and your house is just uh, surrounded by electricity, right? Nobody's going to give up their uh, fridges or their stoves or their computers or their big screen TVs, right? Guys, okay? you don't give up your big screen TV, right? When I draw that picture, they go, wow. And then I say, we call this... Our deep sleep, our deep sleep uh, sleep system, and it pulls you down into that deeply restorative sleep um, that people haven't gotten for years. If 85% of people don't get a good night's sleep, and you've got two people in front of you, you've got almost a perfect chance of having at least one of them not get a good night's sleep, right? What happens if your partner snores? Now, I know women don't snore. Men snore. <laughs> women purr, men snore. <laughs> but what happens if, you're, if your partner is a disruptive snore, is a disruptive sleeper for whatever reason? Maybe they have, you know, hyperactive legs, right? Maybe they toss and turn a lot. Maybe they snore. Maybe they get up several times a night. What does that do to your sleep, right? And when you get a sleep system on a person, Who's the best person to tell you whether the sleeping has changed? Their partner, right? And when you get someone to sleep, it changes the life of the whole family, doesn't it? 